What's going on everybody? So I got brought some cassettes out. I'm gonna get start getting listed and figured I'm gonna try my GoPro chest piece. So that's what you're looking at here. And uh trying to get this fitted before I leave on the, our little guy trip. Since I'm probably gonna be wearing it a lot. Try to get the hang of it. So we'll do a little cassette video to get this thing moving. So pull out a box and then I had another box I pulled a few more out of. Um so we'll just get started. Let's see, T-bone, the hoodlum testimony. That'd probably be about 10 bucks or so. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. It's always a harder one to find. Uh, probably going to be about a $25 cassette, I would believe. Also, too, if you're selling cassettes and you open it up, make sure you look in here. And if that sponge is missing, you can glue another one on. What I do is when I am uh, listing cassettes, I will check them all. If they're loose, I'll go ahead and do something like this and I'll drop it out and I got a little container I keep them in so that when one sells that is actually missing the sponge, I can glue it back in. And what I have is a pair of tweezers and I just pop this up like so. Then I grab the tweezers, I pick up sponge, put a little dab of uh, super glue on it and just very carefully get it in there without getting any glue on your tape. So it's pretty, this insert's pretty trashed. They might be giants. Usually always good to get those on cassette because uh, these weren't too mass produced. 1988. This one's eh, not so much I don't believe. That one may not either. I haven't come across that one in a while. This one I think I have and it was not really worth any much. Worth any much. Listen to my proper English. Telex? Telex? Not familiar with them. So I'm not sure how much there's another one. Neural Vision. So I'm not sure how much they're going to be worth. Tree Weasels. <laughs> Head Cheese and Blood Sausage. Now, if you're looking for cassettes in surf stores and stuff, what I like about this is if you look, you see no markings of a label or anything. I grab anything I don't see a label for. There's several reasons why. Usually they're not mass produced or they're local to a region. This one will probably be, tell you exactly where. See, it was made in 1990. And if you go in here, chances are, and this was here in St. Louis, it's so Webster Groves. So this was produced locally by a local band, and nowhere else is this going to tape probably be in the world. So, and chances are finding one here in St. Louis is probably going to be even very hard to do. So anything don't have a record label on, I grab. Another thing too is even if you see a known artist, uh, I, can't, I don't really have a good example in sight here because these are all major artists that's been around for a while. But sometimes you'll find, uh, like, say say the Trees Weasels made it famous and they got put on a label. Well, this indie cassette would be worth a whole lot more because it was very limited and now everybody would be wanting it since they're popular. So I hope that makes sense there. Uh, print Sign of the Times. I think this is a two cassette. Gilio, yo. Oh, well, maybe they squeezed it all on one cassette. It was a two CD set at one time. Yeah, I guess they squeezed it all on one cassette there. Uh, Graffiti Bridge by Prince. That one's not really worth anything. Pop Will Go Eat Itself. And I like this because it's on a small label, but yet it was a popular group. And to be honest with you, I'm not familiar with this title. Chapter 22 records. I don't, know, I don't even remember what label they were on. So that's going to be an interesting one to look up because I'm not familiar with that at all. Uh, Tom Petty singles. Some of his might be decent now. I haven't really come across too many Tom Petty singles in a while. So since he's passed, some of his stuff's gone up in value. The same with Prince. Another 
couple of promos here, or not promos, but singles. You got to look, you got to look. I sure do be cooking in my book. You me sing everything for you? I can sing every cassette for you. Well, I'll try. Nothing compares. Okay, maybe I won't sing everyone. Uh, the police classics, like a best of every breath you take. Uh, I know the other one is not worth too much money. I'm not sure about this one. I haven't come across this one too much. The other one's pretty much out there. Uh, can't think of the name of it now, but it's a best of also. And uh, so we got Tonic here, which this is one of those mid-90 cassettes that I say talk to you a lot about. They weren't mass-produced in the mid-90s because cassettes were basically... And, you know, they were going out of, you know, people were into CDs more, so they weren't really produced in the cassettes. So I'm not sure exactly how much this is worth. If I had to guess, I would say around 20 bucks, but I don't know for sure. I have to look it up just to make sure, but a lot of, here's another one, 311 on cassette. This was not mass produced because it was a mid-90s release, oh, 93, so... That one may be about the same category. It's worth picking up, especially if you only find, you find them for a quarter of 25, you know, 50 cents a piece or what have you. I love finding cassettes in lots like this, or bulk like this. So we've got Three Fugitives cassette, sealed, soundtrack. Soundtracks is another big uh, collector's market out there for cassettes, soundtracks. So these might have some decent value to them. And we'll get into some, looks like there's more Quiet Riot, being uh, Frankie just passed, the original drummer for Quiet Riot. That one's a little water damage. Uh, this is what got me into hard rock. Um, speaking of hard rock, being that Eddie Van Halen just passed, and not too long ago, Frankie the drummer for Quiet Riot passed. Those are the two bands I remember, like, was it 83, 84? Uh, coming on the radio all the time and they were playing the crap out of Van Halen and Quiet Riot and once I heard them man I got snagged into the heavy metal hard rock world and uh, that's what got me took me to the dark side yes condition critical party all night oh, party all night so we only got Kevin DeBrow passed years ago the singer, Frankie, passed, and Rudy's still around, and Carlos is still around, even though Quiet Riot now are continuing with no original members. <laughs> but hey, it pays the bill, and it has everybody's blessing. You know what? A, a band's name is a brand. It's a business, and businesses go on without their owners. Uh, I understand the whole fact that, you know, people will say, well, it's not Quiet Riot. Well, true, it's not Quiet Riot as we knew them. We as in people my age of 49 years. But it could be something new for a new generation if it if it was able to grab on again. So you can't uh, you can't fault a band for moving on after um, parting with a a band member that meant so much to the band. Here's another example, Queensryche. Uh, being that Jeff is not in the band no more, and they got Todd, who sounds, you know, pretty damn similar uh, to Jeff. But I kind of I kind of saw the writing on the wall with Queensryche because I remember seeing him, I think it was an M5 festival, and Jeff was just very uh, belligerent to the audience. I'm like, ugh. That rubbed me the wrong way, bad. And uh, I go, his days are numbered. And sure enough, not too long after that, he was booted, basically, out of the band. So here's the mini LP, there we go. So still a great band, even without uh, Jeff in it. It's just something new. It's something that a lot of people can't get over the fact, you know, they're not the same Queens, right? They're not the same Quiet Riot. Well, everything dies, and... If something can be, you know, kept going for another generation, then so be it. Or the people that just like hearing the song, even though it's pretty much a cover band. <laughs> you know, Quiet Riot at that point is pretty much a cover band. 
when they're doing the old classics. So you have to take that with a grain of salt, but you're still, you're not going to be paying, you know, 50 bucks for a ticket to see them. You're going to be going to a small club, probably getting in for 10, 20 bucks. So got to look at it like that too. And chances are they're probably not even getting paid five grand for the gig, you know, so quarter flash. Quicksilver soundtrack, Kevin Bacon. I don't know if I've ever seen that movie. Another quarter flash. The Hufa, oh, the Hufa, yeah. I can't pronounce it. Quadriana Fina. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never seen it. I was never really big into the Who. Another corner, right? Another quarter flash. Quicksilver, Queen Drink. Uh, a couple more princes. Most beautiful girl. And seven. Oh, seven, and we'll watch them fall. Stand away in love, and we will smoke them all. Pulp Fiction. That's probably going to be probably about a twelve, thirteen, fifteen dollar cassette right there. Portis Heads. Another one of those. Let me grab them because they're the. 1997, you know, they weren't producing many cassettes by then, so that could be a good one right there. Tom Petty, another prince, the diamonds and pearls. Diamonds and pearls. You know, I don't really listen to queer. Maybe I'll pull them, see if they're on Spotify, and pull them up and see what they sound like. I never really got into them. If you like cassettes but you never really uh experienced what a new cassette smells like i would recommend finding a new cassette taking off the plastic and just smelling it getting that whiff of a new cassette smell is freaking awesome <laughs> it may sound weird but every time i smell a new cassette it takes me back to when i was a kid getting cassettes and uh takes me back the quick wawa not familiar with them but i love stuff like that 1986 still sealed also quick sand manic that was not mid 90s yep mid 90s weren't as popular as someone like uh portis head but there may still be some value there there's another quick sand this one definitely wasn't as popular. This is earlier 90s, I believe, 92-ish, maybe, 93. So I know on CD that's not worth much. I don't remember on this one. Probably not so much. Cassettes may have a little bit more value than the CD on something like that. Queen Hot Space. You can never go wrong with Queen cassettes. Uh, you get several of them. You can get some good, good money if you put them in a lot together. Koi. Koi. I believe it is a rap thing in the mid 90s 94 so not familiar with what it sounds like and of course queen latifah 12 inch cassette which basically basically there's two kinds of singles there's your regular single and then there's your maxi single the maxi single usually even though this only has three it looks like usually has more uh versions of a song on it than your normal single this one not so much usually it has different uh like an instrumental version or different remixes and stuff like that which makes it more valuable this is another one that's probably going to do some well do do well it's 1998 so we're not producing many cassettes then and then the queen's community choir make me over probably not too much value right there on this Something like this, though, there probably ain't going to be nobody else out there with a cassette like this on eBay. So you might be able to price it at like 20 bucks and just wait for that right, you know, buyer to come along. So, a couple more here. EJ Quit, Four Family Flat. This has to be a wrap thing. Oh, it's a local wrap thing, too. At least, uh, Vocals, guitar, maybe it's not a rap thing. Guitar, bass, hm, I guess it is a band. Getting EJ mixed up with DJ, I guess. So this is going to be another local indie piece that might have some value. And uh, 
even come, you know, might not find out around this area, so I might be able to price this at you know 20, 25 bucks. And wait for the right person to come along. And quest one of mine. Not familiar with them at all. David Lebrin, Richie, Bachrock, Bachrock. Not familiar. Not familiar. I love stuff like this. I'm not familiar with. So I worked in a music store for like nine years, from like '93, '92 to 2001-ish, 2002-ish somewhere in there. So I like it when I find stuff that I am not familiar with. That's older so that's it that's my cassettes that i'm getting ready to start working on and uh thanks everybody for watching uh please like subscribe especially on this video if you like me showing these cassettes like i said i've got tons more i can keep this up and make tons of videos doing this so uh let me know what you like and what don't like about this video maybe give me some ideas on maybe something else to incorporate as i'm showing these and uh thanks very much for watching later